People say I'm the best YouTuber. They say, I've never watched a YouTuber like this before. If you are as big of a fan of The Office as I am, you are in for a treat because today I'm going to psychoanalyze the regional manager of Dunder Mifflin Scranton, Michael Scott. And obviously Michael is a fictional character and my assessment of his behaviors are for entertainment purposes only. But stay tuned until the end when I reveal what, if any, diagnosis I feel fits Michael's character. Now Michael has a lot of interesting characteristics. The first one I want to address is his elevated sense of self. From the very first episode, he demonstrates his belief that he is better than other people in the office. In this clip, it's him proving to Jim that he is a better salesman. All right, Jim, your quarterlies look very good. How are things going at the library? Oh, I told you, I couldn't close it, so. So you've come to the master for guidance? <laughs> is this what you're saying, Grasshopper? Uh, actually, you called me in here, but yeah. This is also shown in many, many episodes. Like that time that he challenged the guys in the warehouse to a quote unquote friendly basketball game. Or when he tells Dwight that he can't see his old award speeches because people would remember what he'd said. As if. And when he gets offended that Pam set him up with her landlord. When she is kind, attractive, and most importantly, his age. Now I know. Michael's egotistical behavior is really just overcompensation for how badly he feels about himself. But I felt like this personality trait had to be mentioned. Okay, Ryan, you have Daryl. I have Roy. Really? I thought I'd take Roy. No, actually, I think Roy's our best player, not Lonnie. Next, I want to address his incessant need for attention and to be liked. Again, this trait is shown throughout the seven seasons Michael is a part of. But one of the earlier examples of it is the episode called The Injury. This is where Michael burns his foot on his George Foreman grill and wants special treatment all day. He insists on using crutches and wants them to treat him as if he has a physical disability and gets so upset that they aren't doing what he wants that he calls a meeting in the conference room where he compares his injury to the property manager's need for a wheelchair. <laughs> Morning, everyone. Don't freak out. I forbid anybody to freak out. Clearly, I have had a very serious accident, but I will recover, God willing. I just want to be treated normally today. Normal would actually be good, considering the trauma that I've been You missed through. two big conference calls today, one with corporate. Oh, did you explain why? No, I didn't mention that you cooked your foot. Burn my foot, Pam. Another great example of this is when it's his birthday and Kevin is waiting to hear back from his dermatologist about a possible, you know, skin cancer scare. He had some mole removed and he was waiting to get the results. Michael cannot handle that he is not the center of attention. He wants the entire day to revolve around him and to take everyone's mind off of Kevin's issue, insists on going to the skating rink so that he can show off his skating skills, which are pretty good, I'll be honest and a huge happy birthday Michael banner. Oh, and when he gets upset about not being invited to Ryan's get to know you weekend in the woods and does his own Survivor Man episode, that's a really good one too. And I could go on and on for this one, but please feel free, share in the comments your favorite examples. I would love to read those. Michael is quite an egotistical jerk and needs a lot of attention. If you are following the behaviors and symptoms I've touched on, you could see how Maybe I could initially believe that Michael has narcissistic personality disorder, thinks very highly of himself, needs attention, can't handle any threat to his ego, but we aren't finished just yet. So let's see if there are other traits that line up with NPD or possibly another diagnosis altogether. Next up is his belief that his relationships are closer or more intimate than they really are. The first example of this is how he kisses Jan once and immediately thinks that they're in a serious relationship. Do you remember when he calls her for work purposes and says, I miss you? And she's like, what? And then he's like, oh, never mind. All they did was kiss once. Come on, Michael. Or when he first decides that he likes Holly. He doesn't try to get to know her before telling Jim that he's in love with her. 
Oh my God. And how he says that everyone in the office is his family or how he meets the waitress at Benihana and says she's the one, although he doesn't really remember her name and he has to mark her arm to tell her apart from her coworker. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God, Michael, so bad. Oh, and also how he proposes to Carol at the Diwali celebration after only dating for a few weeks. And finally, his need to be a part of Phyllis's and Bob, as well as Jim and Pam's weddings. He even gets upset when Phyllis's father wants to try and walk down the aisle instead of being in the wheelchair, meaning that his job of pushing the wheelchair isn't necessary. Oh my God, sometimes Michael, he's just, he's just the worst. And another endearing trait of Michael Scott's is that he constantly makes inappropriate comments about and to his coworkers. First off, he comments on how Pam, like how good she looks or how she should be looking all the time. Uh, Pam has been with us um, for forever, right Pam? Well, I don't know. If you think she's cute now, you should have seen her a couple of years ago. What? Uh, any messages? And Michael also, objectifies Ryan, of all people, throughout the entire show. And my favorite example of this is when they read his diary in the deposition and they ask who this Ryan woman is and how Michael describes him as just as hot as Jan, but in a different way. Oh my God, Toby can't even keep it together. It's so, it's just so hilarious. Not to mention his constant use of the phrase, that's what she said, which is awesome, I'll be honest. But there are, the, like examples of this are just endless. Also, Michael is incredibly dramatic and everything that happens to him or things he's a part of, he exaggerates situations and definitely has a flair for this. Whether it's his response to not being invited to the real launch party in New York or him trying to shove his burned foot into the CAT scan that Dwight is receiving for his concussion, Michael always takes things to the extreme, especially when it comes to his relationship with corporate, mainly David Wallace. Michael calls him over so many various issues, whether it's about the possible downsizing, his struggle to co-manage with Jim, or his issue being managed by Charles. Every small upset is huge in Michael's eyes. Oh, and also his response to leaking Jim's secret about liking Pam. Jim talks to Pam, deals with it like an adult. Meanwhile, Michael starts crying when coming clean to Jim about it. It's just, he's just so over the top. And finally, Michael is so suggestible. If he thinks someone is cooler or better than him in any way, he'll go along with, with whatever they say. Like the first example of this is how Michael is told he has to fire someone by the end of the day. If you don't recall, he tries to fire Creed, but Creed talks him out of it. I forget so fast, right? And he persuades him to fire Devin instead. And when Devin gets mad and tells him that Creed deserved to be fired because who knows what Creed does, but he definitely doesn't do any work. Michael wants to go along with him too, but then pushes back, uh, I can't not fire him and fire, uh, and so it's over. So he ends up firing Devin. And a small example of his suggestibility is how Michael mimics Ryan's facial hair. And then after they both cut off their goatees, you know, Dwight finally has grown his out. It's pretty funny. And also when my least favorite character, you guessed it, Todd Packer, ugh, when he tells Michael that if he's planning Bob Vance's of Vance Refrigeration, if he's planning his bachelor party, he has to have a stripper. He's like, no bachelor party is complete without a stripper. What are you trying to throw here? Michael goes along with it. Even though Bob already told him he didn't want a stripper, and to, especially not to come to like a workplace party at like 3 p.m. on a Wednesday or whatever in the warehouse. There are obviously a lot of other examples, not to mention other personality traits that make up Michael Scott. However, based on what I believe to be his main traits, I would have to diagnose him with, drum roll please, histrionic personality disorder. Because, and let me read the diagnosis as follows. A pervasive pattern of excessive emotionality and attention seeking, beginning by early adulthood and present in a variety of contexts as indicated by five or more of the following. Is uncomfortable in situations in which he or she is not the center of attention. Sound familiar? Interaction with others is often characterized by inappropriate, sexually seductive, or provocative behavior. That's what she said. Three, displays rapidly shifting and shallow expressions of emotions. Four, 
consistently uses physical appearance to draw attention to oneself. Five, has a style of speech that is excessively impressionistic and lacking in detail. Six, shows self-dramatization, theatric, thre, bleh, theatricality, wow, that's a mouthful, and exaggerated expression of emotion. Seven, is suggestible, like easily influenced by others or circumstances. And finally, number eight, considers relationships to be more intimate than they actually are. And I believe that Michael Scott has at least five, if not more, of those characteristics. And also just keep in mind that I would need to see him for at least six months, ideally a year, in order to rule out other diagnoses and ensure that histrionic personality disorder is the appropriate diagnosis for him. But what do you think? Do you agree? Do you think there's another diagnosis that would fit? I would love to hear your comments down below. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.